Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Forest Hill Presbyterian Church, a place of love, sanctuary, and community. I have a few announcements to make as we gather today. Uh, first, an important one, remember that we will be having a Christmas concert of uh, December-related music on December 2nd. It is a tribute to those who have died from AIDS, but it's also a time to uh, raise awareness for all the marginalized in our community. So come out on Saturday at two o'clock uh, to participate in that. Some of it is joining in singing, some of it is hearing other beautiful voices like we just heard this morning. So please come and be part of that. Also, um, anyone who is interested in helping get the church decorated before that, I believe on fr Friday morning there will be a group here decorating December 1, 1030. Is that the right time? So if you can come out and help decorate, please do. We are collecting for several things during this holiday season. We've got angel trees going, both for Life Bridge and a um, coat, mitten, warm clothes, tree for Eastminster. Um, so keep those in mind as we're gathering for this time. Um, and also in my office, I've been doing some cleaning through and have uh, one thing in particular, I've got some quilting and knitting supplies that have been donated to the church for anyone who's a quilter or a knitter. And I happened to hear from Jim Webb and it was his mom that donated the quilting supplies. So I asked him what he would like to have done with them. He said he hopes that somebody has interest in them and might be able to use them. So uh, if you would like to take a look at that, please let me know and I will get that together for you. Friends, the Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Make a joyful noise to God. Worship God with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. God made us. We belong to God. Give thanks to God. Bless, Bless the name of the Lord. Our first hymn today is hymn number 265. Jesus shall reign wherever the sun.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you set Jesus Christ to rule over all things and made us servants in your reign. By your spirit, empower us to love the unloved and to minister to all in need. Then at last, bring us to your eternal realm where we may worship and adore you and be welcomed into your everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Therefore, we can come to God with our confession, knowing that the Lord of grace will forgive us our sins and strengthen us for righteousness. Please join me in today's prayer of confession. If we had known it was you, Lord, we would have done something different. If we had known it was you, Lord, we would have given you food. If we had known it was you, Lord, we would have taken you in. If we had known it was you, Lord, we would not have passed you by. But we did. Too often we make excuses for not taking care of each other. We have ignored your commandments to love and care. We beg for your forgiveness, and we ask you to help us change our ways. Reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. 
As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of cloud and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountain of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. It shall be, they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. <clears throat> I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the stray, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Lord of the Lord. And the king will answer them, 
Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You are accursed. Depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then you will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a New Yorker cartoon that shows an elderly man with a walker standing next to his son in front of a large storage unit that is crammed in every available space with stuff. The caption reads, one day, son, this will all be yours. <laughs> now, some things are funny, but not funny, right? Younger generations seem to be getting more and more minimalists in their tastes. I think I understand why, given that in the last decade, my parents built an additional two-car garage with a full second floor for storage space on their property. I feel for the sun in this cartoon. Stuff has piled up. The accumulated belongings of living for 48 years in the same space is overwhelming to this daughter who has her own house full of more than what she really needs. Even though I dread that I will one day have to do something with all the stuff, I must say that overall, in my family's collective inheritance, there is much to be grateful for. My dad continues to live comfortably at home, and there is enough in the bank to cover my mother's long-term dementia care. The thoughtful preparation and saving that went into a plan that would cover our family's well-being for generations has been a blessing. And yet, all the extra tools and clothes and knickknacks and piles of books and magazines and paper and stuff, not so much. I share that same staring into the storage shed face as the sun in the cartoon. Dealing with a family inheritance can be a source of both comfort and consternation, right? I suspect that more than a few of you could tell me some stories from your own family. You who are blessed, Jesus says, will inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Jesus, too, is talking about an inheritance, our inheritance, should we be counted among the righteous. Inheritance is something that's mostly talked about by financial planners, lawyers, and fundraisers, usually in private spaces rather than right out loud for all of us to hear. It's about the property and the wealth that family members leave to us when they die, right? And if you're in an extended family like mine, money and death are both uncomfortable subjects. So putting them both together in one conversation is likely not going to go that well. But in this third and final parable from Matthew 25, Jesus tells us that this metaphorical king has a whole kingdom to give. And this king is going to be particular about those who will share in its riches. In all three parables, Jesus is trying to tell us something about who God is. God asks, asks us to wait with patience like the bridesmaids, to invest with gusto like the good servants, and now to respond to human need with compassion and justice. Those who will inherit God's kingdom are the ones who feed the hungry, Give the thirsty a drink, welcome the stranger, give clothing to the needy, take care of the sick, and visit the prisoners. I suspect that the blessed ones also care about things like housing and health care, education and dignified employment. And for those who want to think only about themselves and their own needs, well, they will not be rewarded with such an inheritance. 
For if you refuse to do any of these things, even for those who are considered peons in the hierarchy of life, you will have refused the king. Kings don't like to be refused now, do they? This should not be new news to us. The pattern should be familiar from any old time religion. Kings will act like kings, and yet the good shepherd is the one who seeks the lost brings back the strays, binds up the injured, and strengthens the weak. We are meant to be responsible to and for the community all around us. Jesus is quick to remind us that we will be judged purely based on the care and compassion we show, not to those of power, but to those who are the least among us. Jesus didn't waste his breath denying that there were human hierarchies as we sometimes try to do. It was as obvious then as it is now. You can talk a good game about seeking to achieve equality in the land of the free and the home of the brave, but we have a heck of a time in putting it into practice. He knew that those who were listening knew who the greatest and the least were. He was counting on it when he told them this story. Then Jesus said that the nations, the nations will be gathered when the Son of Man comes in glory, and when that happens, the inheritance of the whole heavenly kingdom will go towards those who show righteousness. And how, might you ask, do you show righteousness? It's not by how much you held up and sucked up to those who were great and powerful. No, it will be based on how you treated the members of your community you had the least to give. The least powerful, the least prestigious, the least likely to be able to pay you back. Did you give them nutritious food and clean water? Did you welcome a stranger? Did you care about those who are sick or in prison? The inheritance won't be based on how much you can fit into a storage unit or a two-car garage. It isn't even determined by how well you have prepared for your, the security of your family's future. The kingdom belongs to those who are able to see the needs right in front of their noses and choose in that moment to do something about them. Those who are invested in the present will be honored by the king with heavenly treasure that will last forever. What you choose to do in the moment, Jesus tells us, is the choice you will make for your lifetime perhaps even for your eternity. Now, my friends, I've been asked by the stewardship and finance folks in this fine congregation to preach a little bit about stewardship. And I decided that today's text about our inheritance from God is a very preachable stewardship text. Even though we tend to talk about the importance of ministry and mission we do for others on stewardship Sundays in Presbyterian churches all across America, Stewardship Sunday usually boils down to an ask of how much you're going to pledge towards the church budget this year. Has that ever happened here before? <laughs> okay. Truth be told, I do hope you see generous in your giving. Your worship here in this stately sanctuary due to the generosity of generations that came before you. This property was bought and buildings were built with a much larger group of contributors that certainly made the load probably lighter to lift. This is a sanctuary built to hold, what, 500, 600 people? And now you're working hard and putting a lot into sustaining just the basics. And I want you to hear it from me, that I see the hard, hard work that you are doing in that regard. But when you are operating in sustaining mode, and maintenance alone is taking up all your energy, you do try to sock away everything that you can. You fill up the storage unit, the garage, the attic, the bank accounts, because it feels like there will never be enough. That's the mistake that the goats make without even realizing it. They get so busy with their everyday tasks and taking care of their own needs and making sure it's all going to work that they never risk the time or the energy see the needs of those right in front of them. Lord, when did we see you 
hungry or thirsty or sick or naked or in prison. They missed it. And I understand exactly why they missed it. We too can miss it when we're worried about the future or lamenting what we have missed out on in the past, from the past. This text is a brutal reminder that heaven and hell are of our own making. We can live in a heaven, a heaven where the inheritance is enough for everyone. This king has the biggest kingdom and all the riches we could ever need. I mean, what this inheritance provides is for everyone, down to the very least of these. Or we can live in a hell where we keep our heads down and try to preserve what we have, even when the storage unit is filled with nothing useful anymore. Now, I know way, way too many entities that get caught up in self-preservation mode and fail at providing the basic needs that God is asking us to consider making the higher priority. We could blame the church for its institutional failures. Perhaps we should. We could point out the selfishness of individuals and perhaps they would grow a little bit more generous. But I find it stunning that this text is called the judgment of the nations. Jesus says that the nations will be gathered before God. Though God goes through weeding out the righteous from the unrighteous, it isn't churches that are held to account necessarily, but entire nations and then the individuals that make up those nations. The expectation of caring for the least is a broad and extended model. I think this means that we are to care about the people who cross our paths, and we are to care about seeking justice in the systems in which we live so that there will be less hunger, less sickness, less poverty, less imprisonment, and more dignity for as many people as possible. Now, my friends, that's a bigger ask than for me to tell you to consider putting more money in the plate this year than you did last year. That's a different kind of hard work than the hard work of keeping the doors open. As Jesus instructs us through this parable, we won't get asked on our judgment day if we kept the doors of the church open. We will get asked if we really saw the person in front of us and if we helped them in their need. What I really believe, though, is that if we focus on that task more and on our institutional functioning a little bit less, we would see more churches emerge that people find compelling and meaningful. We would discover Jesus among us, and we could look the Lord in the eye when we are welcoming a stranger, feeding the hungry, caring for someone lonely. I know you find it rewarding to serve meals to the homeless at Second Presbyterian. I know you find it important to see one of the Life Bridge kids smiling, knowing they have a safer place here than they might have had in their own school. You, friends, have it in you to focus your attention as Jesus asks us to. We can tap into that sense of righteousness and use the generosity built upon here to nurture the relationships already in the making happening right in our living. We can get to know our neighbors in Forest Hill and let them know that this is a congregation where love, sanctuary, and community are all possible. We can be a light in the Richmond metro region that embraces patient waiting, investment in others, and justice for all. When we do these things, the whole kingdom, God's entire kingdom, will be our inheritance, <coughs> and we will never have to fear if there will be enough, because when we are paying attention, we will begin to notice that God always provides for our needs, right in the present moment. Our next hymn follows along with the
understanding of God as the good shepherd. Hymn number 274 in the red hymnal, You Lord are both land. Contributing to God's kingdom work in the world. 
and that God will use these gifts for that purpose. Let us bring our tithes and offerings. Lord our God, you give us everything. You give us all that we need. You promise us an inheritance that pours forth riches and leads us to the promise of eternal life. Use these gifts for the work of building up your kingdom, the kingdom that doesn't fade, the kingdom that doesn't discriminate, the kingdom that welcomes all. Amen. I just want to take a, a quick moment to talk about our stewardship. Um, I grew up in a country club church and we didn't want for anything and it was probably similar to this church back in the 50s as well which is what i was growing up in that church 
Um, my personal circumstances, our family circumstances, were not country club. We were, had to have basic necessities, but we did not have extras. And I was given $5 a week allowance, starting in fourth grade, for doing my chores. And it was up to me to use that money even through high school for bus fare to school and for whatever else I needed or wanted, not needed, but wanted. Um, but I always kept a dollar a week out to give to the church as my contribution. And, and I share this because I'd like you to think back to how we were taught and how you were came about with your idea of giving and what was what was yours to give to God and his work and what was um, something that you would need to take care of yourself. Um, I'm not sure that I give 20% of my money now. In fact, I know I don't. I know I have a lot more responsibilities, but somehow or another, that sense of what, what belongs to God and what belongs to me, um, that belongs in the shuffle of life. And I guess I would just like to ask you to, to think back, how were you taught to share what you had and, and to give, not just to the church, but, but, but to people and, and to causes in life in general. Um, and, and think about that as you ponder how much you'll be able to contribute to the church this time around. Um, we, we know that our budget um, for the church is really not covered by our, our contributions, our pledges, not anywhere near it. Um, we, we rely on people who use our building and we try to be very sensitive to their needs and what they can afford. But we do survive because of the people who use our building. And I guess I'd just like to say that um, what we're giving is not just for our church. It's for the, the things that we can do in the world as well. So give it some thought. Thank you. God commands us through Jesus Christ to love one another. The Good Shepherd promises to seek the lost, bring back the strayed, bind up the injured, strengthen the weak, and humble the powerful. Jesus will feed us with justice and nurture us in peace. Let us pray now for the dignity of every person, for wise and just leaders, and for the needs of others throughout our country and our world. Let us pray using the response, gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for your guidance on all peacemakers, on leaders who value peace, and on everyone who promotes nonviolent solutions to conflict. We pray for a speedy end to all violence and conflict around the world. God of peace and gentleness, together we pray. Gracious Thanks, God, God, hear our prayer. We pray for the strength of heart and mind to look beyond ourselves and our own comfort. May we be mindful of those who are hungry or thirsty, cold or sick. May we always be ready to welcome the stranger. Help us to really see our neighbors and rebuild community connections. God of generosity and compassion, together we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations not just our own, because your children live everywhere. We pray that all people may know justice and enjoy the perfect freedom that only God can give. God of liberty and freedom, together we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray that the Holy Spirit may embrace the most vulnerable members of our society, 
We pray also for the end to the growing disparity between the rich and the poor, and for the grace and courage to strive for economic justice. God of all gifts and blessings, together we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to prejudice throughout our country and the world, that we will respect all people as precious children of God, and that racism, sexism, and discrimination against the LGBTQ community and all other forms of discrimination will be forever banished from our hearts, our society, and our laws. We pray for your presence at the concert here on Saturday, that anyone whose lives have been touched by AIDS and the stigma around this condition will be blessed and healed through music. God of fellowship and equality, together we pray. Gracious, Gracious God, God, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for a reverence of creation, that we will have the tools and the will to conserve it, that we will use its bountiful resources in the service of others, and that we will become better stewards of all that has been entrusted to us. God of nature and the universe, together we pray. Gracious, Gracious God, God, hear our prayer. <laughs> We pray for all immigrants, refugees, and pilgrims from around the world, that they may be welcomed in our midst and treated with fairness, dignity, and respect. God of outcasts and wanderers, together we pray. <coughs> Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, for all who are suffering, the aged and the infirm, for those who with physical or mental disabilities, that all may have access to proper health care, and that God's loving embrace may be felt by all who suffer. God of comfort and healing, together we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for all prisoners and captives, that a spirit of forgiveness may replace vengeance and retribution, and that we, with all the destitute, lonely, and oppressed, may be restored to the fullness of God's grace. God of absolution and mercy, together we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for all children and families, and particularly for the orphaned, neglected, abused, and those who live in fear of violence or disease, that they may be relieved and protected. God of children and families, together we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for the reconciliation of all people and for the church throughout the world, that it may be an instrument of your healing love. God of outreach and restoration, together we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died as a result of violence, war, disease, or famine, especially those who died because of human blindness, neglect, or hardness of heart. God of eternal life and resurrecting love, you hear all the prayers we lift to you. So hear not only the prayers that have come from my lips, but the prayers that we are making in all of our hearts. Together we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. Yours is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our last hymn today is hymn number 384, Soon and Very Soon. <laughs> Amen.